do. Hello, everyone. How you guys doing? Uh, we are sorry we're a little bit late, but you know we technical difficulties. Kremlin's in full effect, but it's we are fault. here now. <laughs> Sarah and Amanda, how are you guys doing? Doing good. How are you guys? Doing fantastic. So it's excited now. to be here on a, a brand new journey for the three of us. Right, right. A little breakaway, a little departure from the uh, previous subject matter, but it will be interesting. And as promised, uh, I think at least for this episode, maybe even moving forward, we're going to try to do it in such a way where you don't necessarily have to watch the show or be a big, huge fan of the show and follow it every week. We're going to try to make the, the uh, conversations and questions uh, inclusive enough that everybody can participate and at least understand what's going on. So you don't have to worry about any inside baseball as far as what we talk about. Like I think that that's kind of important too, or at least up front to say, so that that way folks aren't sitting there kind of curious and afraid that I didn't watch the last season and I don't know who these people are. Not necessary. Everything yeah, will I be fine. Completely agree. Yes, right. in some cases we watched it so that you didn't have to. So, <laughs> although I have been pleasantly surprised with what I've been watching, isn't it just? I mean, uh, in my opinion, because I've watched from the beginning, this show has really evolved over time. It is definitely not the same show it was season one. Season four was a little, <sighs> but season five, mm. man, these families, yeah. Hot mess families. Hot mess. And what do you, like, uh, Sarah, you said that you, because I think that uh, you said before that you were watching these before. So mm -hmm. from season one to to now, can you be more specific about some of the things that you notice that are different about, like, the uh, maybe the way they approach it? Yeah, definitely. So in season one, which is for some reason not available on Max or Discovery Plus, um, I think you have to go through other other means get a little creative with trying to find a place to watch it but it was it felt to me like that it was like a casting call for who was going to be the next brown family we had right. two families the aldridges and the brinies who were fundamental mormons and they were i think they were both living in utah and actually the aldridges one of the wives vanessa is Mitch Thompson's sister, who's Aspen's husband. So there is a connection there. But, and then we had the Snowdens, who were more like, there was no religious driving force. Ashley Snowden was spiritual and she had these ties to spirituality, but it, it definitely wasn't the driving force behind their desire to practice polygamy. Now the show is much more focused on these families or these couples that want to live maybe alternative relationship dynamics. And it's not so much religious focus, except for, of course, the Merrifields, <laughs> right, right. who is just inventing a whole bunch. <laughs> well, actually, just uh, as you mentioned that, uh, let me see, I pulled up some of the uh, Merrifields folks so that we Folks kind of know who we're talking about. So I pulled up some pictures. Oh. And so that's who the Merrifields are. So everybody kind of has a mental image of who we're talking about. So it's just a quick blurb. Um, yeah, oh, if yeah. I could just piggyback on what Sarah was saying, um, the Merrifields are the only, I mean, maybe not, they're, the, they're, they're not, the, they might not be the only religious couple, but they're, because we have a Muslim couple on as well. But like you said, they seem to be the ones that are driven by the religion, even though, are they really? But they're telling us that they're driven. And I wonder, to me, and and I need to ask you to this, because I what I did is I went back and binge just the two couples that we're going to see in season five. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of it, of course, I was like, oh, these are the two stars of the shows, is these two couples, but especially the Merrifields, because they're... <laughs> at the end of season four, the most messy oh, were, were they the stars of the show compared to the other couples? I think that they horrified people the most. <laughs> right, 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 right. 
I mean, yeah. what you don't get if you're just watching season five is that there is this whole backstory with their first wife or their first attempt at a at a second wife, Roberta, um, where the, Garrick lovingly nicknames her tiny wife because she's short in stature. And, you know, you look at uh, Danielle, his his current wife, and he nicknames her big wife or large wife or something. So you think you think getting criticized for eating nachos is bad? Imagine being referred to as large wife. <laughs> right, right. All the time. Right. And I, and I think that there's uh even as talking about some of the history of the Merrifields, the people that we just pointed out. Uh one of the things that has to be noted is that when they first started this relationship uh with uh little wife or uh Roberta as they work. <laughs> Uh, the Brazilian lover that, that uh, Garrick had pressed upon, they had to ask the question of the K-1 visa because in order for her to come here and for them to be together, Garrick would have to legally marry Roberta. And because he had already been legally married to Danielle, the question came up about whether he should get that divorce so that he can marry Roberta. And as it were, Danielle did not want to get the divorce. She was heartbroken about the divorce. Yeah. And he, of course, pressed her to get the divorce anyway. What do you guys think? Because I think that there's um, there's always kind of that question, like this question of the legal marriage and the spirit versus the spiritual marriage. What do you guys think about the differences between the two and how it plays in the polygamy? I'm sorry. I'm, oh, Melly earlier in the chat talking about the Holy Spirit filling me or whatever. I'm <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um sorry, what was your what was your question, James? So what was it like uh so when we talk about like the uh, polygamy as far as marriage is concerned, there's always the question of the legal marriage and keeping in mind, of course, with the legal marriage, there are certain protections that you have being the legal wife that you do not have. Basically, being the uh, the souped up girlfriend, which is what the spiritual wife is. You're you're a girlfriend, and when Garrick, at least, and it's not said in the uh, show, when Garrick divorces Danielle, I'm thinking the way he thinks in his mindset when he divorces Danielle, he convinces her to just sign everything that they have over to him because he's the head of the family. In which case, if she ever disagrees with his position as far as you know him pursuing other women he could turn around and say get the hell out of my house and that's that do so we know for sure that she did this or are you speculating based on oh, their brainwashing they, they got legally divorced on the show no, no 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 i know they got divorced but like do we know that she signed all the stuff over to him or are we assuming that which I believe because she seems brainwashed. Yeah, they had a conversation um, when they when their their first season. I think it was season three of like the series. Um, about she was like they were talking about like custody and stuff like that. So there was like a conversation about how things were gonna go. I, I don't know about like. They're so messy. Right. Right. Well, we'll say this. When they got divorced, up until the time that, like, while they were talking about getting divorced so that he could bring uh, his new wife into the country, they were renting a house to live in with the family. In fact, they had stayed in an uh, RV for a little while uh, while they were talking about buying this house and acquiring this land. So he didn't build anything and put it in his name until after the divorce. So that's why I'm kind of curious as to how much of anything does she actually own? Because prior to that, it was his business, his construction business. And then after they get divorced, that's when he built his house, the dream house that they had moved into. Like they were renting a house, they got divorced. Then they stopped living in a rental house, moved into an RV, so that they could be together while they built his house, which is basically the polygamous mansion that he wanted. 
Oh my god! Like the secret sister wife room and all that. So, I mean, whether he, um, first of all, there's no way Danielle, who is like completely brainwashed, as the chat is saying, had the wherewithal to like make sure she got all the assets and all. So, yeah. either way, clearly this whole family is wrapped up in Garrick's business. They're all sporting the M. They're he's a, he's planned to build. Like that's why everybody's like acting like it's even remotely normal, even though they're, they are kind of protesting on the show, but like, they're still going along with it because Garrick's signing everybody's paychecks and building everybody's houses. And he's, his business partner is the brother and the sister-in-law. And so, you know, like, yeah, they're all financially wrapped up together. And of course, Danielle must feel, and her parents must feel like we kind of got to go along with this. Otherwise it's like, Oh, it's like going to be just me on my own. Right. But but what's interesting with the Merrifields is d all of these uh, ancillary people on the periphery are her family members. It's her mom and dad. That is her brother. And yeah, they're all working for their Merrifield construction. Um, but it, like on paper, Garrick stands to have the most to lose because his family already disowned him. Mm -hmm. So it's it's wild. It's wildly fascinating to me to see this play out. The kind of brazenness with which he conducts himself because this is all her family. <laughs> Like the yeah, but if it's in his name, he could just kick the parents off. If they, it's like, hey, you don't like my wife number four, you can leave. I own this True. house I built you. True. Yeah. Totally. Well, and that one of the weird things about it as well is that when uh, they got back, as it turns out, uh, Danielle's parents actually moved into uh, the house that Garrick had built. So they were they were heavily reliant on Garrick. Yeah. So, and that and that kind of begs the question as well. Like, even to open it up, how much of this is actually Danielle being willing to participate in it, and Danielle being forced to participate in this? Like, whether it's through trying to keep her relationship together or financially, what do you guys think? I think she's much more um, emotionally brainwashed or emotionally um tied down to him more so than I, I think probably finances is a component but <clears throat> I I think Danielle could strike out on her own if she had the gumption to leave but what I think whatever is keeping her there it's something else I don't know <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I mean, uh, somebody in the chat, I'm sorry, it's it's gone by a little while ago, mentioned this, but I will, I did agree with it that I saw Danielle wanting to bring in a fourth as a strategic move to get rid of Roberta. And like, Danielle killed that, like move, a like a successful, accomplished strategic move. She's no longer the third, the least favored, you know, wife or girlfriend or whatever, like she is back in the one spot and, you know, Garrett kind of needs her or everything falls apart. So that was, you know, very capable on uh, Danielle's part there. Oh, there are definitely times where you can see that. Um, and I've, I've watched other uh, content creators, Amanda Ray, who was uh, featured on the show Escaping Polygamy. She does a YouTube channel now and she's from the Kingston clan. And she talks all the time about how strategic the wives are in these family setups. Like the, where you fall in the pecking order is very important. Um, first wife, like kind of masterminding and kind of they're chess players, you know, they always are thinking two steps ahead. So absolutely. Danielle is saying, okay, well, if, if he wants to bring in Roberta, I'm going to bring in, I don't know, someone else uh, who maybe he doesn't find as attractive, but Hey, he wants this lifestyle. We'll just bring them all in. Right. Right. Well, cause I, do you guys think that there's a uh, point where it's about the religion and expanding the family, especially, I mean, we start talking about like the uh, ethical monogamy or uh, non-monogamy as mentioned yeah. by one of the couples, uh, Grace, 
who was talking with the Sherwoods, but Grace. We used, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll get into that. Just, you know, Grace. When you start talking about like uh them, their desire to have this religious experience, is it a religious experience or is it just merely driven by uh more of a loin? No. Uh, <laughs> Garrett's a perv, for sure. How hundred- dare you, Sarah? Jesus told him he needs to stick his peen in a hot Brazilian. <laughs> and if that <laughs> wasn't... See, like, I think you could say, like, maybe Cody does it, like, under the radar a little bit. He sugarcoats it a lot better. Garrick, my God, just coming out with... um, You know that scripture that you all know, that you all grew up reading? Amanda, you're a pastor's kid. I was How like... Times in Sunday school, did they say, "Hey, you know what, Amanda? That's actually sperm we're talking about here." You right, know, parables, right. parables. I was like, "Did they just turn prayer into a porn situation here? What I is mean. happening?" <laughs> Garrick is a failed uh, cult leader, right? Like Nick is what a successful leader who is actually charming looks like, and Garrick is like creeper failed cult leader vibes i am astounded by nick he i find him i actually find him quite charming (laughs) he is charming that's how he's got these women and he says right to their face like oh i just need there's not enough women for my manhood and they're like yeah he's right there's not people can go out and earn money (laughs) they let who who th- would think this this exists? But it absolutely exists, and it's totally be- because like he's charming. He is so much more likable on screen than uh, creepy Garrick is. Oh, totally, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. He gets he gets dressed in his Sunday best to to stay at home, stay at home, dad, stay at home, think. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, because because even with uh, Garrick's position of. Uh, for those who don't know, there was one point where Garrick had said that he was being used by the Brazilian pre- previously. So I was going down. I was going to bring her up. He filed for the K-1 visa. She didn't get on a plane. She didn't come up. Then he, he uh, meets another one, and he forces his family back down that rabbit hole once again to chase that Brazilian uh, love, the Southern love. So he he's all about getting it, all about, you know, this is what we're going to do. And he says that the revelation came to him, the religious revelation came to him because he was standing in the garage with Danielle. They were having a conversation. The doors were open and the wind blew. And he said, that was God telling me that we need to get another female. God had, had Not the gave us God. a sign. <laughs> and I'm like, no, sucker, that's fall. That's what happens in fall time. Like the wind blows, stuff happens, and it... And it, it was amazing to me how quickly he was to align that to the thing that he wants to being a religious sign. Like the littlest thing happened. Like I stood outside at five in the morning, the sun came up. I was asking God, should I go after this Brazilian chick? And the sun came up and I said, that's a sign that I should do it. I saw the light. No, that's what happens. But when he was in, they went down to Mexico to meet with uh, this young lady and her family. And she couldn't get on a plane because, like, they paid for everything. They paid for the hotel. They paid for her ticket. They paid for their tickets, their hotel rooms. Everybody was down there waiting. The production team was down there waiting. Everything was good to go. And as it turned out, the TSA or whatever the Mexican TSA was told them that they couldn't get on a plane and they couldn't come. And it was amazing to me that he didn't see that as a sign that maybe this is something I shouldn't do. You know, so... Like the the interpretation and the quickly, oh, this is about God and even the uh, corruption of the gospel, like uh, Sarah was saying with, uh, oh, when they talk about the Holy Spirit comes into you, it's a sexual thing. And it's like when men, that's a man going into a woman and then when he ejaculates in her, his DNA infects her brain and turns her into a part of him. But it doesn't work the other way around. I'm like, this dude is a freak. Like, he's a straight up I mean, and, and you know, it was funny in, in their first season that they were on, he, he's, you know, eliciting a lot of sympathy from us saying, you know, my parents thought Danielle was a, just a lesbian. They thought I was a sex addict perv. And, uh, 
you know, but this is, you know, we feel really called to do this. And it's like, oh, okay, all right. Do you, boo boo? Uh, but then he, he starts spouting off this. And it's like, no, I think your parents knew you were a perv. Like, <laughs> they knew that you were kind of not all. I mean, have not you seen ready. the way he's not right? How could his parents not know when he's just like, just those big eyes? Oh. Yeah, and James, you mentioned how he was like not like thrown off by any of the stuff with Roberta number two, Natalia. I mean, that's exactly how him he acted when it was like very clear that Roberta was like struggling with coming to America because of leaving her mom and everything. He was just like, Nope, I'm not gonna allow this to nope. I'm gonna get my Brazilian hot lady. I'm not even gonna mm. question anything. It's like, okay. And they're bringing their teenagers, their teenage boys along for all of this to witness. I mean. Yeah, I honestly what? don't get the sense that Garrick cares that much about all these kids he's dying to have. No. It's, it's uh, I mean, I don't know what his motivation, because we know from like the vast research that we have done covering Sister Wives, how it's like a numbers game for Cody. You know, they're doctrine teaches that you know the more you have the higher you go and and whatnot i don't know what garrick's driving force is because i don't know what denomination he was raised in but certainly not a church i've ever been to because right, right. i haven't heard Hold any on. of that my man is part of poon Par parish <laughs> <laughs> up, what was that me? Poon what Poon parish? parish. <laughs> like, that's what he's about. That's what he's trying to. That's the goal. Because nothing else in this situation matters. Pardon me for being so vulgar, but that nothing else to him matters. And I don't get the feeling that he's trying to do it for a higher understanding, a higher level, a higher position. He looks at the situation. He Jesus looks at the pictures, this boner. He talks to the women, and he's like, oh, "I'm all about this. We're going down. We're going to Brazil, y'all." Pack your stuff. Let's go. But we can't go. I got school. I don't give a shit. Drop out. <laughs> but the the plane, the car crashed last week. We don't have a vehicle. Pack your bags. Another thing. This guy, uh, Garrick, is such a gentleman. He had his kids and his wife packing the trucks up, and he was nowhere to be found. He has his family packing up his stuff so that he can go down on his sexcation. <laughs> It's absolutely the most lazy thing I've ever seen. <laughs> you can't even pack your stuff. Good. Like I gotta save my back because I'm gonna be doing back work down there in um, Mexico, and I, I don't, I don't want to get run the risk of injuring myself. Ooh, but I bet he packed them Jim Jones sunglasses he's always wearing around. Cause like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, and my, I, I for sure for me like. More than anything, Garrick is Walmart Jim Jones. Like, I absolutely think he, when I, when we're talking about, like, what is his end goal? Like, he's just Jim Jones. He doesn't, he's, he doesn't care about the kids. He doesn't care if they live, if they die, whatever. He's like, he wants to stack hot women and stack babies. Right, right. It's wild. And here's some, uh, WH, uh, do y'all notice that Garrick always looks for a woman from a developing country that is financially challenged and can't speak English? He wants yep. all the power in a relationship. And I think yep. that that's a valid point. Like, yep. uh, what do you guys think about him always going after women who are from these, uh, who, where I won't even say they're developing countries because, you know, Brazil is actually pretty built up. It's not like it's in the middle of the country. But going for women who are in financial straits to try to give them this opportunity. What do you guys think about that? A hundred percent agree with Debbie. I I totally think that that is an end goal for him to be in a power position, um, to be as if he's the giver in the relationship and has to be the, the one to, I am the key, the gatekeeper to your citizenship, to your financial stability, all those things. Absolutely. hundred mm -hmm. percent. Yeah. And what not just think? that, like, this is all they can get. They can't get somebody who's in a good position, who speaks fluent English, who understands they're signing up to join like crazy, creepy cult leader guy and is like insanely brainwashed wife. Like they don't understand that. So they have to reach right. out to these countries and they're using translators. And clearly it's not like tra clearly translating. 
And and also, it's so funny. I was binging this show, and my wife came in and was like, "Oh, is this a new season of Ninety Day?" And I'm like, "No, this is <laughs> Seeking Sister Wife, but it's so much worse than that. <laughs> it's like a right. weird twist on Ninety Day. Like they their their whole thing with Roberta was like it was like their own spin off Ninety Day thing, like immigration fraud being committed mm-hmm. on our TV. Like that was wild to me. I was like, uh." Is anyone? I hope nobody right. at at uh, the visa office is watching this because yeah, a little bit of self snitching was definitely going on. Yeah. You know, he's telling on himself. And it, what what even makes it worse is that, and this is kind of where I have this feeling. This is what supports my idea, my notion that he's in a situation where he convinced Danielle, his wife, to sign over all his material. Because what I see in him is somebody who wants to have somebody who is reliant on him financially so that he can exert that control over her using the finances, so he can abuse her financially. And some of the uh, the mainstream guys, or some of the, I guess, red pill guys will refer to that as uh, providing. I wanna be a provider, but at the end of the day, pro- provision is power. Because if I control all the finances, I control where you live, what you eat, how you eat, what you drive, and where you sleep, I control that, then I have the power. If you get on my bad side, I can make life very unpleasant for you. And I think that that's where Garrett finds his power. And a guy who sits there, and this is where I kind of question the whole idea, the Lord wants me to do it. Lord said I should go down and get these Brazilians. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Cause that's where the thong is from. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> the, hot the, the, the Lord said I should get that thong, the thong, thong, thong. And I right. felt it I'm in the- my Holy Spirit filled. The Lord <laughs> speaks through Cisco. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Let the choir preach. <laughs> but as he's doing that, like, like uh, you guys have mentioned, he seeks out women who don't speak the language. So if you don't have communication, like I thought that you would want to have strong communication, especially in a relationship where you have multiple people, the communication would be utmost importance because you want everybody to be on the same page. How the hell are you on the same page when you can't even say, do you know where the bathroom is? You know what I mean? Or uh, where you, would you like the guys go to get something to eat? Or I'm allergic to nuts. Like you can't even tell them that. Like they give you a nut milk, you know? So I don't, they go to him him at one point and he this is like two years into their relationship and he's asking her like how do you say good morning and good day i was like you don't even know that you don't know anything and please come on i know right he has zero interest in learning their languages which actually kind of brings the i'm sorry go ahead no no, no. you go you go oh okay i was just uh about to point out that that actually kind of brings up one of the other families that we could kind of talk about that was mentioned before. The Sherwood family, they're a little different. It's uh, This is where we first heard about the whole idea of the uh, ethical non-monogamy, where uh, you can actually be a part of a relationship, but then step out of that relationship and nobody gets hurt. What do you guys think about the concept of you having a relationship where you can step out and that this uh, kind of free will and, you know, Thruple or open relationships. I'm sorry, this that was a really topic. flash. Is that was Shane and Ashley, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that was the one that uh she's actually uh uh she says she's uh bisexual and she's oh, pursuing the relationship. I have a lot of thoughts yeah, on this. She's looking okay. for a sister wife for herself. Yeah, this is right, right. polygamy. This is a bi chick who's never explored her women loving women's side, and her husband's like, okay, <laughs> like this isn't anything <laughs> remotely close to them looking for sister wives. Yeah, you going to do you, girl? <laughs> yeah, you know what's what's fascinating about them is she's. I think she's either a therapist or a psychiatrist like she is yes. so we, we could talk about grace and her spiritual entrepreneurship and <laughs> you know the helping people to unblock their creativity or whatever it is that she does but um <laughs> ashley actually spent like 12 years in school she said so mm. this really, is- i i find ashley to be really interesting actually but shane is like 
do you know what you got yourself into here, buddy? <laughs> like, right, right. He just doesn't want to admit it. Like your wife wants to go be with women and they don't want anything to do with you. They, I've mm-hmm. seen this so many times. I'm sorry. And these people, these like straight couples looking for a third, they flood the lesbian like dating sites. And oh, I'm sorry, I'm a little biased. I have to like yeah. remove my personal bias as somebody. Oh, no, like, tell us, tell us about it, Amanda. You don't put a picture of themselves as a couple. It's like just some hot lady who you chat with for a while. And then she's like, oh yeah, by the way, I have a husband. And oh. um, it's like, okay. Whoa, <laughs> um, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so they're like catfishing. Really? I, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have no problem with couples or people who do this who like are upfront about like, hey, I'm married. This way, but when they do that, they don't get as many takers, you know. And so I, it's it's a thing in the community. It's like, do you think right. Ashley like went on looking for just someone to date and then? absolutely like oh i'm actually married like that's why the other chick was like i want i don't want to see your husband for like five weeks or however long it was i absolutely think that's what happened seven days they they were like if you go on seven dates with somebody you guys are going to stay like at that point (laughs) like you got a whole girlfriend (laughs) but i think that there's a there's a question um and and i'll pose it to you guys like uh because i've always taken a position or at least thinking about it that a lot of times when we hear, or at least, you know, from from the folks I hang out with, when we hear the term bisexual, there's always an assumption that you're coming at it from the perspective of being a heterosexual who may be willing to dabble in like homosexual activity. But I think that there, because you know, sexuality is such a, a broad spectrum, I think that the folks who may be actually gay. And they might be willing to dabble in a heterosexual relationship, go widely ignored. And because of the, uh, the, the let's just say the way that people kind of view the sexuality of women, they don't necessarily take it as serious. So if, if she comes to him and says, oh, I'm interested in perhaps going out with a girlfriend or get myself a girlfriend. OK, yeah, you go ahead. I ain't really worried about it. But the point that I've always, you know, when I when I've talked to folks about it and I've had friends who who've been in that situation, I've always said to them, like, you might be trying to push your girlfriend to go get a girlfriend, but bruh, let me tell you that that girl can take your chick. <laughs> like, she can come in and she can, <laughs> she can put that wham, bam, boom on her <laughs> and she forget about your ass and you the one sitting in the corner watching. So you want you want to make sure that you take it serious because that's another person. It's not just a, a sexual situation, but I think it's another person. So what do you guys think about with her being saying that she's bisexual, and especially with her past, like she said, she grew up and she was uh, grew up in a very uh, conservative home. Do you guys think that there's a possibility that she actually may be uh, closer to somebody who is queer instead of queer curious? She's actually gay, or do you think that it, it's just something that? Well, she's definitely know, she's queer. Gay. Like there's there's no, queer is like an umbrella term. She's for sure queer. Okay. And, and, you know, I personally believe in the Kinsey scale where, you know, you could be, you know, bi and you mostly date women and occasionally date men, or you could be bi and you mostly date men and occasionally date women. Um, there is a giant subreddit on Reddit that is, I forgot the name of it, but it is all of these women who are married to men. Some of them are bi, some of them are gay, but that's the thing is that they're married to men and that they're like, some of them feel trapped, some of them don't, some of them are still in love with their husbands and they don't know how to deal with it. But anyways, it is not unheard of to be married, to grow up in a conservative you know, environment where you never explored your sexuality and then start out saying I'm bi and eventually realize like actually I'm gay. I'm not sure that this mm. is what's happening though because you could also be bi and just, she just wants to explore this side of herself and then maybe she ends up staying with her husband. So it's a whole big wonderful rainbow world and you know i'm just choosing to believe her that she is just bi but one thing i do agree with is that like she wants to explore women and she doesn't want to explore women with her husband that's what i'm reading no yeah it's she would very much like to have have an arrangement where she gets to do her thing and he doesn't ask questions i think right, right yeah i don't even know why they're going on dates with him like he says like it's a no for me and she ignores him 
<laughs> he's kind of a dud too. Like <laughs> that well, guy didn't know what to do with this. He's like, I'm on a date with my wife and her girlfriend. He had no effing clue what to do with this. Well, because I think that when they first started out, and this is one of the uh, things that I talked to my daughter about, like with uh, even with Danielle and in this situation, you have somebody who is a part of a relationship. They're presented with an idea or a proposition, and they agree to that thing that they disagree with. They agree to go along with it under the auspice that at some point later, if you don't like it, we can always change our mind and we can cease and desist all activity. But once you agree to do that thing, then all of a sudden the question is, well, why do you want me to stop? You must be jealous. That's a default in your personality. When, when she starts dating this young lady, the understanding, at least from the way I picked up what they said earlier, was when they first started going out, it was about them going out, her exploring this so that she could bring this woman back and it was critical that the two of them, you know, it basically they become a throuple. So you have him dating her, him with his wife, his wife with this other woman, and then the other woman with, with the husband. So it kind of goes around in a circle to the point where the other woman had to be willing to have his child. So at some point they were going to be together and that's going to be together together. I kind of forgot about that beyond. until you uh, said it. I kind of forgot about that until you said it, James, that that's they did say that, that she had to be willing to have his child. But it just to me, when they're actually on the date, it just reads to me like um, it doesn't read like they're creating a throuple. It reads more like she wants to explore her sexuality and he's like, OK, with it, even though like, is he really OK with it? <laughs> no, no. Well, Grace <laughs> is female Cody Brown. Shh. There is no bigger fan of grace than grace like mm -hmm. grace believes that she shits gold bricks like <laughs> she, she fully did not believe that the server would be able to produce a vegan soy gluten <laughs> happiness free salad for her like it looked like a salad when it came out like had veggies on it like look like a salad but i feel like grace had to make a point to be like mm, it has to be vegan soy free gluten free and you know can you put a pep in right, your right. <laughs> and of course my man he said they ordered a murder plate so that was awesome <laughs> like, tomahawk, <laughs> silly. bring out the tomahawk so you don't even have to cook it <laughs> just He's walk like, the cow right out <laughs> I want steak with lamb bread, like you know, what I mean? <laughs> and baby seals on the side. Like it was, it was pretty. Uh, so for for her, I think it was pretty intense. But there is also a point where I think that there's a natural competition, which is where I think that there has to be, like we talk about communication. I think that this is where the communication has to come in from the very beginning, and you have to both be open about exactly what it is you want and what you're trying to achieve and what your limits are in these situations, because. Even though he set the limit and said that we all have to be able to get along together, Grace was looking at it from a perspective of, okay, I just have to accept that you're around and not get in arguments with you. But this is my girlfriend. Like, because yeah. even when he called at the uh, bowling alley, like, hey, babe, where you at? I've been babysitting this child all day. I'm looking for you to come home yeah. to help relieve me. And when that phone rang and she realized that it was uh, this young lady's husband, it was almost like, who the hell is calling you? Why is he calling you trying to mess up our time? This is our time. You know what I mean? So I kind of got that feeling. Like I, and this is where I think that they have, there's a, uh, if you don't do it right, it opens the door for there to be selfishness on the part of the person who is getting, you know, everything that they want. So they're getting their cake and eating it too, but they're taking advantage of the other participants. Like this is a not a non-ethical uh, non monogamy situation. This is a situation where people are being used and eventually people are going to get hurt. To what me, do you guys think about that? it reads like the reverse of Danielle and Garrick, where we have the husband mm -hmm. is sort of being pressured into a lifestyle that he really doesn't want to live mm -hmm. by the wife. And I just have to say, like, Dawn in the chat kind of nails it. Like, Grace, she, uh, Dawn says, Grace looks at Shane 
Um, sorry, this is the one that starts out. Um, a thruple would imply that the other woman has to be willing to have sex with this guy. Grace looks at yeah. Shane like she wants to toss him off of something and run with his wife. Yes, that is Grace is not going. Grace doesn't want to be in the same room as as Shane. <laughs> right, right. Grace can't even believe she has to share air with this guy let alone uh like a whole <laughs> partner like, yeah um i can tell you've never been in therapy because right, right. i'm kind of no. like a <laughs> but you aren't a therapist so. <laughs> i'm kind of like an attorney but i'm not really an attorney but i'm like a doctor who's, who never went to medical school like oh okay yeah that, that makes sense <laughs> <laughs> and what do you guys think about like the uh like with the uh when should if you are going to engage in this like what what would you guys ideal notion of it be when you get involved with this type of situation where you're opening up your relationship when should the other partner get involved should they be should they be involved with the search should they be involved with the first dates the first couple conversations should they always be involved or should it be a thing where the wife is going out getting somebody she wants and she connects to and she's re reintroducing that into the family. I have I, Sarah's I, face just now was yeah. like, if anyone's listening, her face was just like, James, like, why I are you asking thoughts, me? But I just have no idea if they're good thoughts. Um, <laughs> I like to me, I feel like the most transparent way to do it is like have them involved from the get go. But I don't know if that is like the healthier way to do it. But what they're doing seems like just cheating. And then Shane, you can come pay for dinner, essentially. <laughs> like. I mean, I don't think there's like probably, maybe I'm wrong. There, there's probably support you can find online if you're poly for this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I have seen... First of all, you never know what's going on inside people's relationships, but I have seen what I judged to be a poly relationship that worked, um, where a husband and a wife had a girlfriend and like, they didn't tell me the details of how they did things when they started out, but I would think it would be a little bit closer if you're going to have a real situation like the Davises where you're all literally in bed with each other and you're 89 foot bed. <laughs> um, I think you they have it right. They're not even letting them have their own bed because they're like, no, no favorites here. I think from right. the get-go, you all go out and you make sure you all get along. Um, I'm flashing back to, uh, I don't know if it was this season or previous, but I remember Danielle, this is back to the Mara Fields, saying, like, what are we going to do if he likes somebody and I don't? And I remember thinking like, oh, um, you'll still just take that lady into your family because you, it doesn't, doesn't matter what you think. Cause they're the crazy family that doesn't work. If you're the functional family, you want to make sure everyone likes the person. And so you should start out all hanging out with the person. That's what I think. Right. It's, right. it's fascinating when you see, especially like with the Browns, like all these, all these spiritual testimonies that people are getting that are conflicting with other people's spiritual testimonies. So, yeah, like, what if uh, the Lord is calling Garrick one way and Danielle's like, actually, the Lord told me that was a big nope. Sarah, like <laughs> Danielle hasn't learned yet to say God told me the way Garrick does. She's still in season five is saying, oh, my instincts are telling me this might be too soon. It's like, no, Danielle, you got to say what Garrick's saying. No, the Lord told me we need to wait. Right. What are I you know, doing? Because Janelle would stand in those couch interviews, be like, I had a spiritual testimony, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Like Janelle knew how to go about getting mm -hmm. what she needed. Right. Like. Yeah, Did don't be afraid. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, you got to stand up and say, well, God told me right. the exact opposite. So what's up with that? Yeah. You know, the, the crazy part is that with some of these families, especially the ones that are uh, rooting themselves in like this, this uh, spirituality, especially from a perspective of the patriarchy. Like, well, if God told you that, that must be the devil because it goes against what God told me. And since I'm the prophet, and God talks to me, it doesn't matter what God told you. And that, that's where it gets, like, to me, that's where it gets ridiculous. And even, like, uh, with regard to the Merrifields, one of the things that bothered me 
in addition to her doing like the over sympathizing. Like, what do you guys think about that? Because there was a point where she was trying to manipulate Garrick's position by saying that she sympathizes with the pain that he went through once that first relationship broke up. So therefore, they should be very hesitant about getting into another relationship. So remember when you got hurt, the last woman we tried to date, did she really hurt you? So I don't think it's a good idea for us to get involved with the next one. What do you guys think about that as a tactic and a success rate? So in other words, she's offering, offering, she doesn't want to do the date. Like she doesn't want to date this new Brazilian woman. But she, instead of her coming out and saying, this is something that I don't want to do, or as you guys mentioned, saying the Lord told me that this is a bad idea. She's saying she's trying to use his feelings, his emotion, and his pain as a shield as to why they should be allowed to do it. What do you guys think? I I think that that is probably the uh, the only trick she has in her arsenal that she falls back. She tried to kind of like I don't know reverse psychology on him or something, but she she's terrible at her execution. So <laughs> it's it's just not playing the way I think she thinks because he's. <laughs> as opposed to it being this kind of masterful manipulative move, he's taking it as like, dare you speak against what we both agreed God called us to do, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And along the, those same uh, points is like, she's like thinking, Oh, let me protect you from this grave pain you've suffered. But actually what when he's like breaking down over losing losing Roberta, he's she's been sold on the like, oh, Roberta's the love of my life. And it believe me, it did look like Roberta was the love of his life, you know, those first couple of vacations. Like he seemed head over heels for her. Mm. But really later in the show, to me, I see this man who's like, Oh, my cult, my cult is falling apart. It's all my cult is falling through my hands. Uh, I'll just go get another Brazilian. Like, I'll get Roberta number two. Like, that's what she doesn't know. Like, she needs to cater like she did when she successfully strategically got rid of Roberta via bringing in a fourth wife. She needs to cater to his selfish culty side, not to his like, you know, sweet, you know, he's not that sweet. You don't need to protect his, you know, right. he's not going to care about protecting his feelings because he didn't care that much. He was like, moving on, Roberta number two. Yep. Right, right. Well, because I, I think that there's a, because there's a lot there. And I think that part of the problem that she has is that she's appealing to his better nature, like you guys say trying to convince him that this is something he shouldn't do because it's going to hurt you. So I'm a good person because I'm trying to look out for you. So we shouldn't do it. But at the same time, what that says to me is in this dynamic of the relationship, the only opinion that matters and the only feelings that genuinely matters are the feelings that Garrick has, because that, those are the feelings that you're, you're, you're placating to. Those are the feelings that you're trying to keep in mind. Like we got to make sure that Garrick doesn't get hurt. So we don't want to get him hurt. And this is one of the things because she she's yet to come out and say, look, this is breaking my heart for us to do this, for us to even for me, like the sacrifice for you to ask your wife, hey, baby, would you mind sharing me with another woman? <laughs> and for her to say, yeah, OK, I'll, I'm willing to do that for you because that's who she's doing it for. She's doing it for him. And then you're going to give me a divorce from me so I can go be with another woman for me. OK, I'll do that for you. And then for him to take all that and then not consider her feelings at all, that tell, like that pretty much tells you what Garrick is about. Like you said, he's only worried about Garrick and the trying to grow, grow his flock and more to the point. I think it's just I think it's a numbers game with him. Like I think he just wants to add women because he wants the variety, not because he wants the family. And it's because it's not about family. There was one point where he uh and, and maybe you guys don't remember this, but there was a point, I think, in uh, this, two seasons ago when they first came on and they first started talking to Roberta, when they were talking about getting her pregnant and they were saying that we, we're going to try to get a baby and I'm going to push a baby in her. Oh. And she hadn't received her K-1 visa approval yet. So the question came up, well, what happens if she gets pregnant and she's still down there in Brazil? And he looked his wife right in the face and said, he looked his wife. I'm sorry for laughing, but it's ridiculous. Like yeah. she should have cleaned the shelf on him. He said, 
He looked at his wife right in the face and said, yeah, well, I'm going to go down to Brazil because I can't have my son down there while he's talking to the mother of two of his children. Two of his sons are right there. And he's like, I can't have my kid down there by himself without a father. What are you talking yeah. about? Of course I'm moving to Brazil. And that right there, that was like, Danielle, you are you are non-player. In this no, game. exactly. <laughs> that is exactly when Danielle lost me, okay? At first, I felt sorry for Danielle. You know, she's very much, she's like a victim of this crazy culty guy, right? Yeah. But when, mm. when she was like, okay, after he... You know, he doesn't give a shit. He's like, I'm going to go stick a baby in this lady in Brazil. Maybe I'll leave you. Maybe I won't. Maybe you'll never see me again. Who cares? I certainly don't care about you or your circumstances. Certainly don't care about the two kids we already made. Whatever. Like, and she stayed. She stayed with him. And she supported that. And she, you know, she's choosing to be with this crazy psycho guy. It's wild. <laughs> I like I saw in the chat people were like, oh my God, Sarah, speechless. Didn't think that was possible. Like only for the Merrifield. Like, am I like mouth agape at what I'm watching? <laughs> I never thought it would get worse than him nicknaming his wife Big Wife. And and that that's right. like that's like not even a big deal. <laughs> It is it's sad too. And what do you guys think? Like, uh, cause with a lot of these situations and it, this is, you know, her harkens back a little bit to, uh, SW sister wives. Like, when do you stop feeling bad for the people who are participating in it? Because I, like, I, like, like Amanda said, like I, part of me, I'm conflicted because part of me wants to feel bad for, uh, Danielle because she is beat down. Like, this man has beat her down and broke her. Like, she's broken. And then there's another part of me is like, why does she keep showing up for this dude? Like, he, she's not a bad-looking lady. Like, you could do better. Trust me, girl, girl, you could do better. Amanda, or not Amanda, I'm sorry. Danielle, if you ever see this, you could do better. <laughs> like, no, call on me. Like, hey, hey, I'm Danielle's attractive. Yeah, no, you're totally all right. up on that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> She's fine. And she yeah, works at it too. Like they show both of them working out. Like, yes. Eric's off looking for hottie number whatever. Like, you know, Danielle is not some, you know, Danielle's in like crop top. She has like a washboard stomach like she's she, loyal she's dedicated and he has thrown her away and you're she, and she has a family that will let you do whatever you want for their daughter <laughs> <laughs> like it's all good they'll like, wear your promo they'll wear your, they'll promote your business like whatever make sure they have a house to live they you know her brother <laughs> probably should have whooped your butt a whole bunch of times ago but right. hasn't for whatever reason <laughs> I mean, I think it's a good question, James. Like, is she so brainwashed to the point that she's no longer culpable? Um, we've got people like Lori Vallow. I don't know if y'all have heard about her. She's in and out of the news, her and Chad, whatever. You know, they're they're beyond psycho. They they they're like actual criminal murderers. Um, mm -hmm. but you you have this question of like, when is somebody culpable for their choices? And when is somebody a victim of the culty thing? And I think that's a question mark that's going to stand over Danielle's head as long as she stays with Garrick. Right, right. I think also, even with the, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. Oh, I was just going to say, I think we see a lot of times, like I think we've seen Robin and Cody go from victims to perpetrators. And... Right. You know, uh, there is definitely seems to be like a line you cross. I think, you know, and I, I don't even know. I probably shouldn't say this, but I think we've seen parenting decisions made by the OG three, even that have, you know, made us go, hmm. And so there's, there, there's a line where it's like, okay, are you, are you just existing, doing no harm, or are, are, are is someone else suffering uh, on account of your actions? And if it's the latter, then I think, yeah, there there's a line crossed. Right, right, and I and I think that that's one of the things that uh, that's an excellent point as far as like talking about the children because there's another component in it. Because even as we're talking about the couples, the throuples, the open monogamous or the open relationships, the uh, polygamy and all that, 
I think that there also has to be a conversation about there's a huge difference between when you're uh, parents who are just kind of out doing your things and you guys are, you know, free and wild and you just jumping in and out of bed with a whole bunch of folks opening your family up that way versus when you're a parent and you have little ones and you have children because you're dragging those kids into that situation as well, which we've seen with uh, the Merrifields where every time they go down to, like when they were going down to Mexico, yeah, the kids were going on a kind of a cool vacation, but they were going down to be a part of this whole scenario. It wasn't just, uh, you know, them keeping it tight and right for, uh, for Garrison. It was, you know, or Garrett. They, they were do doing this thing for, uh, they were taking. Oh, uh, James, I think you muted yourself. Uh, it's on your screen. Oh, there, there I go. you go. Uh oh, so we knew that. I'm sorry about that, guys. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so excited. Um, <laughs> you, you, you deal with a lot of these things. You're, you're taking the kids down there and you're exposing them to this. And then you're getting them tied to a person that Garrick is just attracted to because he's attracted to them physically. And then when that relationship doesn't work out, you expect that those kids to tie themselves to another person. And no matter how you try to explain it, it has to be some damage to these children. Oh. You know, and their ability to maintain themselves. So what do you guys think? Yeah, yeah. I I mean, at, at some point, because and I've seen um because I watch a lot of like true crime stuff and I've seen, you know, people discuss. Like, oh, X, Y and Z might have been reasons why uh this person did the things they did, like traumatic childhood, brain injury, whatever. But it, at the end of the day, lots of people have those same criteria and don't go on to do whatever horrific thing they did. And I think likewise in these situations where people perpetuate the cycle of abuse, like I think that's crystal clear with Robin Brown in particular, like just, I think she was a victim and now she's victimizing her children. Um, but with Danielle, it's like, okay, I, I wish that her parents had the like wherewithal to sit her down and say, Hey, like, this isn't right. Like you shouldn't like bring your kids around this, bring like, make them a party to it. Like this isn't healthy for them. They were uprooted from a home that they lived in to live in a, a RV while they're building this, like, polygamy utopia type uh kind of like the lehigh house that the mm -hmm. browns lived in at first it was like specifically built for like multi-families and it's like danielle at what point is it do you say danielle you need to put a stop to this right right yeah, I think it's um interesting. Uh, sorry, just in the chat, Emily Lee uh, said, as a child from the AUB, I can testify to the fact that you go along with the chaos because it's all you know. Um, so the kids are just having to go along with it. They don't really know any better. And I noticed through, I don't know that they have any couples on this season doing it, but in past seasons, just in passing, I saw like some kids were excited about it. Some kids were like not, and they were like really upset in some of the other families that didn't continue on to season five. Um, but yeah, there's, there's no doubt that it's, it's affecting these kids and, and sometimes in a negative way. And, and I do agree with you, Sarah, that I do think Danielle has reasons that she's doing it, but she still is responsible for those kids. And so at some point you have to maybe say it's not worth it anymore. I'm going to, bring some stability to my children's lives. Yeah. Because I have to imagine, like we haven't heard anything about Garrick's family since like their introduction to, on the show, but it's like, did these kids just lose grandparents, aunts, uncles, like, because, because Garrick wanted to get his pencil wet. Like it's right, basically, right. You know? well, cause he's searching and anybody who disagrees. And that's where I say that, uh, Danielle finds herself in a precarious situation because anybody who disagrees with the things that Garrick wants, he will cut them off. And if he's willing to cut off his parents, then he's most certainly willing to cut off Danielle 
especially because they both expressed that at some point they had trouble with their relationships. Just real quick, let me give a shout out to uh, Melly FZ, $30 Super Chat. Thank you so much for uh, kicking in. Thank you guys all for watching the show and, and uh, hanging out with us. I know it's a little something different, a little bit off pace, and you guys are hanging in there with us, and we appreciate it. Yeah, I saw some people in the chat saying we were tempting them to watch this freak show horror reality television Dip version. A Dip a toe. Watch. <laughs> and you know what? It's like usually like you have to wait like 10 episodes for like that black screen with the white text telling you like something went awry. You get that episode two of yes. season right. five, guys. They are not holding out. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Well, it's very that much of a dumpster fire. Yeah, like, it's and I think not much of a dumpster of fire. Huge right. dumpster fire. <laughs> it will disgust right. you. It will intrigue you. It will make you laugh. It'll make you cry. It'll make you cringe. It's it's what is uh Stefan from SNL? It's got it all. <laughs> yes, right. yes, yes. It's got everything. It's, it's got awesome. the non-monogamous, fluffy, yeah. light couple, and they're always yeah. talking about their 20-foot bed, and it's got, you know, oh my gosh, somebody send the police. This family is in trouble. <laughs> well, and I will say this, too. Just in fairness, uh, for people who are considering watching it, and maybe on the fence because of uh, uh, the other show we used to cover, um, the show that shall not be mentioned, but <laughs> uh, the, the way it kind of works out, if you guys can imagine this, the show is a lot lighter than the other shows that we were watching. True. You don't necessarily have the in-depth uh, familiarity that you would have with the previous show because they are doing more of an anthology where you have a bunch of different families and a bunch of different circumstances going on. So it's a lot of stuff that's happening, and it's not it's clearly not as heavy. And to be honest with you, at least from my perspective, a lot of these, the pursuit for polygamy is broken down basically that you know to uh to chasing they chasing it they're they're chasing that good time it's not necessarily they're trying to grow their family or expand their family or make their family better because of some religious dogma they're doing it because they want to have a sexual experience and this is a way that they get to do it and stay married it's like it's uh legalized basically legit or legalized cheating so. And you know what's funny uh, um, with the, I think I'm going to butcher their last names. I think it's the Salah Houdins, uh, the Muslim couple. Right. It seemed to me like uh, Naeem's mom was like, nah, nah, you are not going to pervert my religion like this. Like, <laughs> right. like they're, they're coming saying oh yeah like back in the day like there there was polygamy in islam and it's all good like how garrick is trying to right. say that you know and his mom is like no way no way are you going to do this she called it germy <laughs> I was mm. like, ah. jamila she yeah. is quite a blessing to this show um what a reality tv find yeah, Jamila right, is right. to me. Well, Jamila and Danielle are both great reality TV characters. They cannot help themselves. You you know how they feel. You know exactly how they feel. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, I think that every now and again, you're when you're watching these reality shows, the one thing that they always seem to be lacking, and every now and again, every blue moon, you get blessed with a vision or glimpse of one, where you have a real person who is put into these crazy situations, like somebody who's just going to call it like. Most of us who are watching the show, we're sitting there saying, why the hell would you do that? And you have somebody who's on the screen saying, why the hell would you want to do that? Like, Because even when she's talking about Jeremy, and he gets the uh, gentleman, for those who are not familiar, uh, the husband or the uh, the guy who's involved, his mother, and they pre like him and his wife are presenting to his mother that they want to have this open, not open, but they want to start adding wives to their marriage. And his mother is saying, like, I don't like it. It's nasty. It's Jeremy. If you need attention because you need somebody to support you, get a pet. Get a dog. Get <laughs> that was great. You get a dog. Buy, no, buy get a cat. Dog. Get some goldfish. <laughs> you know, but you don't need to start adding people to your family. I Put think the it's posters nasty. up or something. Yeah. Right. Get a <laughs> hobby. Like, you know, motivational <laughs> pictures up. Yeah. Go to therapy. Yeah. Don't do like <laughs> Don't do this. Yeah. And I think that it's, it's just good advice. And when she started talking about Jeremy, and then from that point, that's the one thing that I noticed, is that a lot of them, because of the, the manipulation tactics that they use, they always latch onto the 
one hanging thread that they think is the weakest part of the argument. Mm -hmm. So he hung on to the idea of the uh, the germy part of it. And because she didn't say, look, there are venereal diseases that you can catch. You can go down there, try to get wild, get a little strange and come back and ruin your family and your health because you get sick. You know, from somebody like Garrick, he down there, he don't care. I never met her, but I want to marry her. She's from a different country. We never sat in the same room, but I want to take my whole family down there so that I can throw a ring on her so that that way I feel comfortable to have sex with her because now she's part of my family and it's not, you know. Um, uh, James, to be fair, didn't Naeem say that they all get tested? He did, right? Yeah. Didn't he say, like, oh, everybody gets tested? I don't know if I believe him, but he specifically was talking about getting tested for something. That's well, that's great. Like, that, that's a good um, start. Yes, that's, yeah, that's a good <laughs> a good start. Because <laughs> I think that there's also the part of it, there's a there's a hidden hand portion of it. Like, when you run in, the, when you run in them streets, because you belong to the streets, when you run in them streets. <laughs> <laughs> You got to understand the game. The game is this. you Just because you get tested on Friday, it's not all good if you go out and start scoring around Friday night. If you hit the club Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night, and you're going home with three different people, that test doesn't mean anything. You know, and and he's sitting there talking about, like, oh, we, well, we're going to be responsible, and we're going to get tested. And one of the things that I've, I've – well, because like I said, I've had friends who try to, you know, experiment with, letting people into their relationship. One of the things that I always say is that when you bring another person into your relationship, you have to understand that that person is coming and they have baggage, they have hopes, dreams, aspirations, and everything else. That's a whole person. And so that person may be willing to share your girlfriend's partner yeah. or your wife's partner, but then when the two of them are sitting there and they're talking, she look at her and say, hey, girl, I got a man that'll tear this to pieces. We need to go check him out. I want to share my guy with you. And what do you, what's going to happen? Once you take that door off the hinges, it's off the hinges. So if she, just because she's messing around with these two, doesn't mean that she's not messing around with somebody else or she's 100% committed to them. And that's where the, the mom is saying that you have to be careful. I mean, to be honest with you, you don't necessarily know when you're married that your wife isn't out doing or your husband isn't out doing things. Sometimes you people know, find out the hard way when they get right. tested themselves. Yeah. At the doctor's office. Wait a second. I don't understand what's happening. I'm just, ooh. Yeah, the doctor's like, <laughs> it's, it's immaculate herpes, I swear. Immaculate herpes. <laughs> 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 well, what? Tell them I had to go to the bathroom right? they put the paper down on the seat. Like, come yeah, on. Now. I got it from the toilet. Classic. If we're the OG3 when we talk about sister wives, can we be the immaculate herpes when we talk about <laughs> sister wives? That matches how like trash the show is. Because <laughs> I sure Garrick does not know where that came from. Certainly. Right, right. <sighs> Holy hey, Spirit yeah. herpes, someone said. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I can't believe yeah, Garrick just like mean. destroyed the Holy Spirit with like equating it to jizz. I can't believe it. I and still you know what? You can be like kind of religious, you could like have some knowledge of religion. I don't know if you want to get to those pearly gates and have to explain that clip. Like Garrick is about to do the ultimate look back episode and go, uh, <laughs> is going to be like, mm, Garrick, you want to explain this one? He's going to be like, ah, uh. yeah. So what I yeah. meant was, <laughs> yeah. No, just want to come over and talk to Garrick because apparently he put words in your mouth and I just want him to explain to you what you meant. <laughs> I want to hear from the pastor that is giving counsel to this guy. Yes. And does that pastor know he's like gone on his own side Christian polygamy journey? Yes. He said, get over it. Like, yeah. But even then, Garrett was down there messing. Like, because that's a good point, too. Garrett was down there messing with Roberta. They hadn't seen each other for uh, months at a time. She's down there doing her thing. And then he's down there trying to make a baby with her, which implies to me that they're not being safe. So no. the whole idea of like, oh, we're we're uh, practicing stuff because we're adults, and of course we know the consequences. Apparently not. No. Nope. Uh, just real quick, sarcasm for fun, twenty dollars. We just need uh, some humor to help us during this time. All three of you have been so funny tonight. So thank you. 
like all three channels. Love, I might just watch and catch up. Oh, show. Oh, you're the best, Sarcasm. <laughs> Thank you, Sarcasm. And of course, uh, Kathy Ferran, the dog is cheaper. <laughs> then a flight <laughs> to Brazil. Bring Not if she works and she's bringing the salary in, though, if you're some of these other families. Like, okay, back not to go too chaotic with where we're talking tonight, but is the Davis family just trying to add salaries? And that's why Amy's like, oh no, we need at least four wives. I am not holding this down with just a pregnant woman's salary. Like that's it. I love Nick Davis. <laughs> And barring and nobody clip that and, you know, bring it back when something horrific comes out about him. But like he right. is like he's I feel like he's figured it out. He's figured it out. <laughs> what I will cold, say, yeah. I I don't my my eek, my asterisk about the love because I'm like with you a little bit on the love fest because I'm about to compliment him. Mm -hmm. But my asterisk is 22 year old. They go after Danielle when she's 22. Ick, yeah, gross. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I do love how upfront Nick is. And he's like, yeah, you're going to be sharing my bed. You're I'm, you know, I'm a stay at home dad. I'm never going to work. You will provide for me. You will do me. There's no, you know, I'm kind of calling the shots and he's just, he doesn't hide it. He's not having to manipulate these women by yeah. anything I can see. Maybe there's like behind the scenes stuff, but that is, it's fascinating. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, just so everybody uh, sees who we're talking about. I have a picture. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I just got to find it. Oh, here it is. Yeah, just quick. I try to put, get pictures, but the new program won't let me do it. So that's what the they look like. is that's so cute. Vera? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Very cute, cute. baby. <laughs> but uh, the one thing that, that uh, kind of stuck with me when uh, I think about Nick. Uh, something that Amanda said, and I'm glad somebody else picked up on that, because I was feeling like, oh, is that what I'm hearing? Because they started talking about adding people to the family. And now, normally, when people say, we want to add people to the family, they talk in terms of, I'm looking to grow my family. I want to grow my family. I want to make my family larger. When Nick started talking about it with uh, the one wife, I think her name is not Danielle, uh, Lisa, or whatever, Jennifer. Jennifer, when I started, think. The yeah, when he started one? talking, I'm sorry? Sorry, the one who just had a baby is Jennifer. Okay, yes, he was talking to Jennifer. Uh, as he was talking to Jennifer, he had said, I'm looking, we have to expand our family. And that's technically terms that I've heard more along the lines of business. Like, people look to expand their business. So you may have a, a you may have a YouTube channel. You say, I want to expand my business. So instead of me just talking about this particular program, we're going to talk about Seeking Sister Wives. I'm going to expand my business. I'm going to start doing merch. I'm going to start doing selling clothes. I'm going to start doing counseling or coaching or whatever the case may be. If you're a doctor, doing therapy sessions or uh, public speaking, I'm expanding my business. And when I hear them talk about adding additional wives, what I hear is we need to increase our, our salaries. We need to increase our income because we're struggling financially. Because I think with the two wives, you do what you can do when you can do it. When they had just the two wives, Nick had just the two wives, they lived in a house that they were renting. Once they started talking about bringing another wife in, all of a sudden they're looking to purchase a home. Then once they started talking about purchasing a home, nobody wants to be house poor and live in a house where you're just basically paying your mortgage and you can't afford it. You're sitting on milk crates in the living room. You know, so I think that they're, when they look to increase their salary, it's not enough for them just to go and ask for a raise where they might get 5%. They need a whole twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 coming into the household. But uh, what do you guys think about, the, uh, for those who aren't familiar, with this particular family, unlike other families, Nick isn't married to anybody. The man isn't married to anybody. And yet he insists that the other ladies get married. What do you guys think about that setup? Fascinating. <laughs> oh, Amanda, you're all mute. Um, sorry, I wanted to shout out reality with Krista Marie in the chat, calling it Nick and his harem. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that is probably one of the more interesting um like financial details is like, oh, so 
is it, you know, and I never believe any of these reality TV stars when they talk. And so I'm like, I don't really, what does he say on the show? Like, oh, I, of course I wanted them to get married because nobody will be the favorite. That's what he says. Right. He, and it's, it's actually kind of brilliant, right? Like it's, if we're all worried about who's the legal wife, like, I don't care about that. Be the legal wives to each other, have the legal marriage to each other. Leave me out of it. You guys can benefit from health insurance or whatnot and all that stuff. And I, you, nobody can say, Oh, he's favoring his legal wife. And then it kind of seems like now he wants Danielle to have a legal wife of her own. And she's like, I don't want one. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. That's the suspicious thing. Like, why is he forcing it on Danielle? Is there, there there's gotta be some sort of gain that he gets, right? Well, I have a I have a theory. Oh, a hit theory. us, hit us, James. Right. Between us in the <laughs> chat. <laughs> I think that what he what he's doing is he has the women marry each other because like in this particular case, for those who don't know, uh, he had the two wives who are married. Then he has the new wife who is a 20 something year old and he wants to add an additional wife so that she can marry that person. What that person does is anchors that income to that household. So even if you get a situation where Danielle wanted to leave, she's not married to anybody. She, she got herself an apartment. She had it up. She let, you know, uh, <laughs> Nick, because he's home. He caught her packing her stuff up. He came upstairs. Her stuff was missing from the living room. He didn't know what was happening. And she was like, deuces, bitch, I'm out. And she left. Right? And that was that. So if if he has them marry each other, that ties them into the household. Good point. So that, that way they can't, they no longer have freedom of movement. So if you do want to leave, then if you get divorced, those women can sue one another for alimony, child support, so on and so forth. So it, it creates a, a, a bit of a, a, a catch snag for him to be able to hold on to the women. I think that that's why he's doing it, because it did sound pretty slick when he said it. But I think that, like, if you really dig down into it, the only real benefit he gets is that the women can't leave. They don't have freedom of movement. They just can't walk out. What I'm what I'm hoping we get more of, because part of the Davis's charm is Nick when he wanted to propose to Danielle, which we have to point out, I'm not sure how old Nick is, but I think April's in her like late forties. That's the first wife. And she has like a teenage son who we haven't seen yet this season. Um, but yeah, Danielle is 22. Don't love that. But right. They Nick dresses up like a, mu- a magician, like a full on magician. In like a per, uh, it was like a red or a purple uh, suit jacket, and they did like they did his makeup. They did eyeliner. oh the proposal, yes. And these women were like loving it. Oh my gosh, you look so great! And he's like so appreciative of like them gassing him up. Like it was mutual, and that that was the wild part. It was like he's loving on them. They're loving like they're. It's like everyone's getting something out of it. And it's like, I don't get it, but these people seem genuinely happy and they seem genuinely brokenhearted when Danielle leaves. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you too, if you bought that scene, I wrote that in my notes. Like, do do, do you really buy that they're that upset or is this like them putting on a show for the show? Cause there's cameras there. Or was it like, OMG, she was supposed to help us with our mortgage payments. There like, it is. That's what it is. That's what I mean. I was really looking at a new computer and now uh, like Danielle's right. gone. <laughs> well, because here's something interesting that was pointed out to me. Did you notice that when they went to the uh, toy store to buy this these presents for this child, like the baby, and they were going to get like these, oh, we have all the wives and we're going to go in and get something for the child and maybe I'll get something for myself. And they come out with like a 20 cent or $2 doll. You know what I mean? Like, I think that they are struggling financially. And when you have, like, when they started plotting and planning on purchasing the home, and this is just a supposition on my part. 
I can't prove any of this. Mm-hmm. But I have the feeling that when they were planning on purchasing a home, they know what the mortgage is going to be. They know what the bills look like. And the budgeting that was done for that purchase and taking care of the household figured in all three of those uh, incomes. And then now you're down the income. You figure if you are used to operating on a shoestring budget and you have three incomes for you to lose $30,000, $40,000 just walking out the door, that hurts. Yeah. That's a hurt piece. So, uh, and I, and that would lead to some tears, you know, Mm -hmm. <laughs> like if you're making a hundred thousand dollars, all of a sudden we're gonna take forty off you. You gonna cry a little bit, you yeah. know? Yeah. On the show, we see Danielle, the twenty-two year old who leaves. For everybody who didn't watch the episodes, we see. And, and sorry, this must be confusing for, for people who don't watch because there's two separate Danielles, um, mm-hmm. and they're both like important at least right now. But so when the Davis is Danielle, when when the young Danielle when we see her crying, like, Oh, I'm upset. Like, I don't know. Uh, what does she say? She says, everyone deserves a right to live how they want to live. And right. it's apparent she's decided she no, more, no longer wants to live this way. I'm one, I'm remembering her friend from uh, maybe that was last season, her friend who came on and was like, um, the guy doesn't work and you guys just all support him. Like what's in it for, you know, are they using you? I'm wondering if she is feeling the obligation to pay for this new house. And if that is part of what motivates her to leave is like, she feels like she was brought in on purpose to be an added paycheck. Mm-hmm. She's the Mary mm-hmm. Brown. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> but you know, it's, it's weird too, because I think that there's always that part where, you know, uh, like you could say, a lot of organizations will try organizations and groups will try to target people who are extremely young because when you're a young person, there are things that you will tolerate that you will not tolerate as you get older and True. you get more mature. It's just things aren't as important to you. So in your twenties, somebody may say, Hey, you can have a good time on the freaky deep tip with this person. If you just go along with such and such, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. But when you hit 30, you're like, yeah, look, I got to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> you know, you know, you're not calling out to go on dates anymore, you know, or or sneaking out of your house. Like I'll catch up when I catch up. I got things to do. And I think that she's kind of turning that corner where the excitement of being a part of this big family relationship where we all get in the bed together and it's all fabulous and wonderful. The newness and, and curiosity of that experience, I think, for Danielle or this a woman that's a part of the uh, family we just were talking about. Uh, for the young girl, I think that that newness is wearing off, and so the, the 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 triviality of her saying, "I want to be a part of this big family and jumping in and out of bed, we all sleep on the same big huge mattress together because it's amazing and make him feel great." You know, that's kind of getting tired. Plus, there's also the real fact of if you're going to work every day and you're leaving your husband at home, you're gonna feel a certain kind of way about. It. Uh, yeah, Donna in the chat said at least one Danielle came to her senses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> one true. woke up. Teresa Skinner, 49 Super Chat, Super Sticker. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Awesome. But yeah, what did you have to say, uh, Amanda or Sarah? I'm sorry. Oh, I would know. I was li- I was listening to what you were saying. It's the the Davises. It's so interesting because you know with with ever all these other couples, we see like someone who's miserable, someone who's not benefiting right from the situation. And Mm -hmm. it's like, I'm looking for that in, and I'm questioning like, are like, is this for real? Like, are you guys for real? Cause this, this can't be for real. You're all sleeping in one bed. Like what? Um, but they, they're like loving it. And I, I don't get it, but I, I don't hate it. Sarah, don't you love having to crawl into a bed from the end in between bodies? There's no way right. I wouldn't be an end. Like I'm, <laughs> <at the> end. <laughs> I'm it's not like I'm not laying in the middle. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the bitch seat. Like do, yeah. who who is it? Whoever makes the most money gets the ends because they're like, um, I gotta wake up and go to work. Like, how do they decide? Who gets to go where? I mean, obviously Nick said that he's in the middle, but you're right. Like I would, I there's no way I would never be one of the inside people. No, no. And maybe that's, no. maybe that's Danielle's gripe. She's like, you know what? I'm 24. I just, 
I just want a <laughs> respectable full and like, you know, get me some target sheets. And yeah. she's not asking for a lot, you know. Maybe that's what did it for her. She was like, I just can't take the bed situation. She I just have to go to the boom boom room for some peace and quiet, you know. What I mean? Right, right. You know they're not washing those sheets every time they have sex. Like, there's no way. There's no way. That would be that. I mean, the way they made it seem like he sleeps with them constantly. The oh, you know those sheets are filled with the holy spirituals. I would, right, right. Yeah, I would rather be in that bed than in anything with Garrick. <laughs> right. Well, there is a point too where he said, because there's a couple things that uh, Nick said that didn't throw me. He said that, uh, well, when it comes to my relationship with these women, because he always tries to get deep, you know, it's like the solar system and the sun. They oh, yes. all revolve around the sun <laughs> yeah. and they're all at equal distance but they always get what they need so that they can maintain their orbit. So basically he's saying, I give them just enough to where they aren't going to go anywhere. <laughs> like that's, that's the uh, translation. And when he thinks about the boom, boom room, I can see a situation like, don't call it that, call it the sex room or whatever, the uh, safe space or whatever, <laughs> sexy space. Look, I can see a situation where some of the women like, okay, I'm going to go sleep in the other room. Okay. I'll come and join you. No. No, <laughs> no. Tonight I will be by myself. <laughs> I need some peace and quiet. I need to not call over people. I need to not have nobody like this. One need to cut her damn toenails because she's killing my legs. <laughs> Can you imagine yeah. a bed full of like five, six farts? It's just that's too right, much. Right. Too much. I'm, my husband the and I have will a kill you. king. So we're technically in two twins that are pushed together. The and it like. When we go on vacation, we always get a hotel room that's two queen beds and we sleep separately because <laughs> okay. we like to, we say we like to be alone together. <laughs> so it. I, this bed situation is like my worst nightmare. Like that is like <laughs> too so many. <laughs> no, same. Anybody that's like, I, I'm a mover. I twist and turn all night. I have to ch constantly change positions. Like, are you kidding me? No, I would feel so I mean, trapped. You know, Vera is probably getting in the bed. Like, and she's probably taking up the most space because kids always take up the most space. Yeah, they so, like sideways. Yeah. yeah, they sleep sideways. They sleep like right in your armpit. And like, yeah, they just love getting in all the nooks. So, oh my God, worst nightmare. Can't. Right. <laughs> Right, Oster would find out super chat. The one huge bed creeps me out. I'm with you. The one huge bed is too much. I could never do it. And it, you know, the the logistics of it would bother me because at some point, if you're on the inside, you never really get to get out from under the covers. Like, how do you get out from the covers? So everybody is all warm and snuggled in, and here you go. Like, I gotta go to the bathroom, and all of a sudden, the cold air wipes the whole bed out. <laughs> Oh my god! So it, I didn't it, even think about that. Like I, it, I cocoon myself like a like a right. little taco burrito in the night. And if yeah, if someone just whipped the sheet up and let all the cold air in, I would be so upset. Uh oh, did you lose Panda? Uh oh yeah, she dropped out. She's like, I had enough. <laughs> <laughs> she Maybe might have, uh, texted her. She's like, this one huge bed thing. I don't know. Right. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Oh, hell no. I'll be back. <laughs> my husband was like, I just like, cause my husband is responsible for making the bed. And he was like, I would, I would die trying to make that bed. But when we mm -hmm. watched him pull the fitted sheet, like across the room. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to walk across the room. And I think that the way they have it set up, I'd be willing to bet that that actually their room is the basement of the yeah. house. Yeah, I think you're you right. Know. Mm -hmm. It's just that they have the other three rooms upstairs. Mm -hmm. uh, the one bed thing was this. The one bed thing is a little weird. How annoying would it have to be to be? <laughs> it would be crazy. Yeah, I would. I would not be able to do it. <laughs> Wait, let me text Amanda. Let me see. If yeah. Because she... they forget about the jumbo bed. The boom boom room is a no go for me. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, you guys. Where would you rather sleep? Like in the boom boom room, or in the in the family room, let's call oh, it. Here she is. Oh, there we go. She's She's back. Back. I always gotta have something. That's all right. That's all right. We got you. 
Yeah, because we're talking about the uh, we're still talking about the boom boom room. And if you have three bedrooms, and one of the complications that they have, particularly in this family, is that if you have the three bedrooms, and then of course I've made the assertion that I think that the big bed is downstairs, probably in the basement. That's their bedroom, so that they can have that big long mattress. Um, so you have three available rooms. Well, I guess two because you have the baby would have their own room. They probably don't like. Sarah said, probably don't sleep in the damn room, but they have their own room where they have a bed mattress <laughs> that they never see. They go play in the room. But you have two additional rooms, I guess the boom boom room. And then of course, I would have to have my own room for reserve. Like I this is my reserve room. So when I don't feel like crawling over folks or getting kicked, or you know, Danielle or Susan or Frank or Lou came in and they had a call for a hitch in their throat, and I don't want to get sick, so I want to sleep in the room by myself. I just want to watch a show. Excellent point. Right. Maybe you just want to yeah. watch your your uh your shows and you do, and God forbid someone that has a has the flu, has a cold, has COVID. Oh my goodness. How right. <laughs> about no. a super spreader of Be on the bed holding your phone with your headphones, trying to like cramped between a bunch of people, like shh, stop farting. I'm watching yeah. I'm watching New Girl. Stop it. You know? Yeah. Right, get your arm <laughs> off me. <laughs> Stop trying to bang me, Nick. I have to finish right. Housewives. <laughs> this isn't the boom boom room. Yeah, save it for the boom boom room. <laughs> yeah, that, that's actually one of the nice things. Nick. I don't have to go to the boom boom room. <laughs> My evolution has slowed down. Okay, it's not very sunny right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good time. Because because that's one of the questions that I, I've always had too. Because with the uh, a lot of times with the polygamy, especially when you root your foundation into your sexuality. So I, I'm experiencing a lot of different women, and I'm having a lot of different folks, and it's amazing, and everybody's having a good time. What happens when the sex stops? You know, because they kind of address that, I guess, in Big Love, where my man was sitting there popping Viagra like Skittles, a uh, uh, Kit Kat. You know what I mean? He's sitting there like what? <laughs> A handful of chicklets just popping Viagra because he had to take care of three, four, three women at the same time. So what happens when you start to slow down and it becomes a thing where now you have to rely on the relationships as they were without the sexual release? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know that I believe that he's banging as much as he says he is. Um, right. but maybe, maybe if, if I believe them and they are, what happens when it stops? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I do buy that the original two are totally, like Sarah said, like totally all in, if not, they're like really good actors. Um, yeah. but they do seem in sometimes a little bit of a harem -y way. Um, but mostly it seems okay. Like, okay, they're doing their own thing. They're all like what, um, you know, this is healthy. Um, is it safe? Not monogamy. What is it called? Ethical, ethical, monogamy. sorry, not yeah. safe. Yeah. yeah. This is, you know, but also safe. Yeah. We want safe, safe too. And healthy and Holy ghost herpes free, hopefully. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I do wonder if like every other friggin' family on this show, they're going to struggle with finding somebody who wants to bring a third and a fourth salary into this situation. Right. Christy right. says it's a modern ethical harem. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. There you go. Bog flower 99. Super chat. Boom, boom, boom. Let's go back to my room. So I was going to say, which one are y'all singing in your head? Are you singing the boom, boom, boom? Or are you singing the boom, 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 boom? I was I was singing the boom, boom, boom. Let me say me well. <laughs> I think James was doing the other one, no? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yep. I was doing the other one. I like, love that there's like so many boom, boom, boom songs. <laughs> right, right. Well, it's a popular thing, which it makes these shows popular in and of themselves because they kind of adhere to our carnal nature. <laughs> of uh, what now? You know, how to yeah, yeah. Because because I think that the way uh, Nick's situation works out, the first wife she like because this is why he says not everybody has is at a different proximity as far as like the time and attention that they receive. Because even in the first time, his first appearance in the first season that they appeared, they had kind of expressed that the first wife doesn't get as much attention. Whereas the second wife, she was kind of always pawning. 
the uh, the one that had the baby. She was always kind of pawing at him and always like, you know, they would, even when he slept with the older wife, because they were supposed to be sleeping in a room together, he would creep off with the, uh, they would all be in the bed together. He would creep off with the second wife and go do their thing and then come back and get in the bed with them. She with always the seemed like wife. the favorite to me, even when Danielle yeah. was in the picture. I was like, oh, wife number two, totally the fave. He's yeah. loving that. And then that's where I think that Danielle's experience and problems too, because he he would express himself heavily with the second wife. But because she had the baby and she may have been spending more time with the child and she was distracted away and her time was more occupied. So the third wife is getting a lot of attention. And now an additional part of the complication that she's having as far as bringing another wife in is that she's looking at the perspective of, okay, the second wife is back in play now. She's trying to get her time in. And so my time that I used to get is being shrunk down is diminished. And we're talking about bringing somebody else in. When am I going to get my wheels rotated? Like I can't, I can't get into the, uh, the cypher anymore. And I'm not, and it's, I'm going to get less time. And I think that that's one of the things that you have to consider is, you know, you're kind of getting into these types of relationships. What happens when it does slow down for you? And are you going to be okay with him finding a new toy and being super excited about this one and maybe can't perform with you, even with the pharmaceutical assistance? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, Danielle must have just woke up one day and been like, what the hell did I get myself into? What is... I got, I got to get out of there. Cause like, clearly she's not telling anybody else, any of the Davis families, like her sister wives don't know. Nick doesn't know Nick. Like you said earlier, like Nick busts her moving out. She's like trying to do it in secret. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> poor Danielle, but thank God. Dan- and I'm taking the plants. Yeah. <laughs> hey, where are the plants at? The air ain't as fresh. Yeah. Well, my other favorite part of uh, this particular guy is that he has these three women, they have full-time jobs, he stays at home, and he he went as far as to say something to the effect of, well, I don't want to waste my life out there wage earning when I could be doing more productive things like sitting at home, thinking deep thoughts, thinking. and trying to enjoy this thing called life. Like, what the, like, are you serious? We got like, enough you might be thinking that, But you don't ever say that in front of the women who got to get up at six o'clock in the morning and go to work. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, he's giving his valuable contribution of thinking (laughs) the amount of times that they all are like, he's got to do his thinking. He's got, you know, he's doing, he may not be working, but he is thinking. I'm like, how is, what is is that? That's nothing. That's not a thing. What is he a philosopher? Like, I mean, that's how they treat him. They treat him like he is like, they are in awe to be in his presence. Paul the Baptist or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just, yeah. It is. I don't, I, I wish I don't look at my husband. <laughs> I'm never like when he opens his mouth. Oh, <laughs> you know, you don't hanging on his every word. Like, no, oh but, my. somebody get a book. Somebody, somebody write this down. Yeah. He's like, thinking, <laughs> is everyone listening? Yeah. Like they <laughs> cried last season, like April cried, like, we're just so lucky to like be able to have him just tell us all the things he thinks about. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it goes right back to like the charisma just pouring out of it. Like, uh, like to have, not only does he have these women and they're working and they're whatever, and they let him do whatever he wants. And they, but they're like, you said, they're just hanging off his every word, you yeah. know, it's wild. <sighs> right. It's a, I, in a way, I mean, I get it. I get it. Like, everybody likes to be admired. Everybody likes to be loved and appreciated. But there's a point where it just becomes downright creepy. And it would, like, for me, it would make me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it would, it would, well, tell me what you think. Like, all right, now, slow down. <laughs> what do you think? I don't care what I think. Just tell me what you think because you're amazing. Like, and, he, and even the thoughts that he has, like he does a lot of circular thinking. So it's even the points that he makes, it'll be non sequitur points. So he'll say a bunch of things, but the things that he says doesn't really add up to much. It doesn't really answer any of the questions that anybody's answering. It just it sounds philosoph- philosophical and pretty, 
but he's not really saying much. Like, oh, the whole planet thing. Like, basically, you're saying if you don't only spend you spend enough time with each woman to keep her in play, but you're not really trying to focus on her. And you're certainly agreeing to the fact that you're not spending equal time with any of these women. Because he doesn't have the setup that I think a lot of us are more familiar with, where the women get the rotation. They each get their own night. He's basically saying, I go, I go with who I feel like being with at the time, and they get the attention that I feel they deserve, which is a completely you know, selfish and small-minded thing to say. So he doesn't say it that way. He uses the whole planetary uh, rotation thing. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh, I did have a question about the, uh, like with the whole idea of polygamy, I've heard a lot of these families and a lot of these couples, they'll talk about the logic. They'll use the logic of these types of relationships. So they'll approach it almost from the form of like, a, the, we logically are going to stay in communication and we're going to do bop, 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 bop. And that's how this is going to work. And they forget about the emotional component Component that's involved with these people because they're people. They're going to feel jealousy, envy. They're going to want time. They're going to be selfish. They're going to want to stop this stuff from happening and take different positions. What do you guys think about the um, the idea of them using a logic as a form? Is it a form of manipulation, or are they genuine about it, or you know, is it are they serious about it? Do you understand what I'm asking? Or no? Are you asking about Nick specifically, or? Well, any of them, because all of them kind of have their instances where they use logical explanations as to why they should be able to do the thing that they want to do. Mm-hmm. So, like, for instance, with the uh, with Nick, it's I should be able to stay home because basically I have to rest up because I have to pleasure these three these three women. And as we add more women, I got to get my rest because I can't be out fiddling around at work and then come home and be able to perform when it comes time to the boom, boom room uh, with. The Merrifields, he used the idea of, well, logically, if we bring another woman in, you can't be jealous. You can't be feeling a certain kind of way because this is what God asks us to do. And logically, if this is what God asks us to do, we just need to figure a way to do it and accept that this is our lot in life, as opposed to you feeling the emotion of jealousy and trying to get me to not do this thing. I don't like, think Garrick is genuine at all. Um, I see like a cold blooded snake inside his eyes mm-hmm. and I don't even think he believes what he's saying. Um, to be honest, I think he's like, there's maybe even some awareness. Like, I don't think he buys his own lies, but I think he would never like say that in front of the cameras, obviously, cause he's committed yeah. so hard. Um, and with Nick, I mean, you know, I I think he maybe buys his own stuff. I think he really sees himself as a thinker. And I really do think he thinks like he's adding value to these ladies' wife. And I don't blame him because that's how the ladies act. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, And and with uh, who are our other couples? I think there is some awareness uh, on uh, Naeem's side. I I don't know that he is totally genuine. And I think his mom is calling him out and... It's mm-hmm. like you when she's like, oh, of course you don't mind. Like, I think she knows her right. son is like just so thrilled to be able to keep his wife in that stability and also go plant his, you know, what do we call it? These his dipstick in the oil or whatever yeah. of another field. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, what do you think, Sarah? I I don't think there's anything genuine about Garrick. Garrick reminds me of like an AI glitch. Like he, (laughs) you know, with, with several, I mean, one couple, we just haven't even met yet at all. Uh, Naeem and the Salahuddin's that we've like barely met them. So, you know, I'm, I'm cautious. I'm reserving judgment until we learn more about, cause their little blurb on TLC says that it's uh is her name Nyla N- Nyla uh, Nyla um uh, let's see I had it written no, no, don't give me the line I might I'm totally butchering it but I didn't think it was it, pronounced the way it was spelled um but yeah it was something like uh Nyla or something like that okay. um she she's supposedly the driving force after 15 years of marriage Mm-hmm. Uh, I, and I'm like, I, I 
reserve judgment to see if that is actually the case <laughs> because I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, I think that um, when you when you look at it, especially with uh, some of these families and the resistance they receive from the families, uh, I think that there is a point where we have to understand that the family members understand them better than we do. So if there was a, like, for instance, with the, uh, the Shahideens, if there was an instance of infidelity, the mom may be struggling with accepting their openness to polygamy because she understands that if her son, I'm not, I don't know this for sure, but if her son has a history of infidelity, then she's saying, look, this is not going to work. You know, if, if he had a problem, you indulging him in his problem is not going to go good for anybody. If he can't stay faithful to you, it doesn't matter what he agrees to logically because he is driven to do the thing that he wants to do. You know, so if he wants to lay down with a whole bunch of people, you giving him the green light to lay down with a whole bunch of people is not going to make your situation better because you agree to go along. That's kind of where I'm at. But uh, hopefully, I'll leave it there. And let me know if you guys have anything else to say in addition. But I appreciate everybody coming out, spending time with us for this particular show. And I know that a lot of you, like I said, don't watch the show and probably like, what the hell do they talk about? This one and that one. And they pulling these people up. The show is crazy, y'all. It's crazy. It's definitely worth a watch. It's definitely. Yeah, like I said, it's, it's nowhere near as heavy as the previous programs that we were watching or covering. It's a lot lighter. It's a lot more ridiculous in nature. And I think a lot of folks would get into it if they actually took the time to actually spend time watching it. Uh, did you guys have anything to say in closing? Um, just, um, I don't know if you, I know you quickly, you put up fog, uh, flowers, uh, super, just sh thank you everybody who, who gave us a super chat and then Bridget Oster. I don't know if you saw that one, um, from Bridget, uh, the one huge bed creeps me out. Um, and yeah, thank you to oh, everybody yes, for, yeah. for joining us on our new, our new Wednesday lives. Yeah. Thank you everybody so much. And everyone take care of yourself as always. Like, we yes. love you guys. Yeah, everybody yeah, be good to each other. Be good yeah. to yourself, be good to each other. Love to everybody. Love to the community. It's been a hard time for mm -hmm. the community and and so, yeah, let's all just show each other love. Right. Yeah. And make sure you uh hit the like on your way out. If you're uh, not yet subscribed to all the channels, we are open for subscriptions, so we'll definitely take your subscription. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead and hit those uh, thank you guys so much for coming out, spending your time with us. Like I said, I understand you could be anywhere. You could be doing anything, but you chose to spend a little time with us and we appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Have a good night. We out. Out of here. <laughs> <Yeah>. We're out. <laughs>